the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a good, good praise this morning. Amen and amen and amen. As you remain standing, let me read the opening scripture here this morning. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. I believe it's the same scripture that we read last week, an opening verse. Thank you, worship team. You did great. It's awesome. The anointing is powerful. Amen. How many love the worship uh, ministry? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's awesome. Ephesians chapter 5 and then verse 18. <clears throat> this is what the Bible says. In my version here, it says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on now. It sounds so good. I want to read it one more time. All right. For all our homies and our homegirls in the house. Ephesians 5.18 says, don't be drunk with wine. Because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you one more time. Speak to every heart, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Turn to your neighbor on the right or the left, and then give him a high five. Amen. Come on, give him a high five. Come on, give him a high five. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated now. And then also, of course, uh, last week, we used another, uh, an account or a, uh, some verses here in Matthew chapter 9, verse 16 and 17. We read a few more verses, but today I want to read just a couple of verses in Matthew chapter 9, verse 16 and 17. And uh, the Bible says that no, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment for the patch will pull away from the garment making the tear even worse neither do people pour new wine into old wine skins if they do the skins will burst the wine will run out and the wine skins will be ruined no they pour new wine into new wine skins and both are preserved new wine skins for new wine come on why don't you say new wine say new wine this morning come on one two three new wine see jesus makes a declaration that this is a new way of life this is what jesus is bringing out jesus came to announce a change in dispensation, we talked about that last week, that he, he went from grace, I mean, he went from the law to grace. He went from the Old Testament, the law, to the New Testament, Jesus. Instead of animal sacrifices for the forgiveness of people's sins, it was now the Lamb of God being Jesus that showed up to make the ultimate sacrifice on the cross of Calvary as an ultimate sacrifice for all humanity. Hello, somebody. From the law to grace. It's a new dispensation. See? So he makes that declaration that this is a new way of life. Letting go of the old and entering into the new. It's a new way of living, he says. And he is explaining to the disciples and the Pharisees that those who want to embrace this new way, grace, cannot simply try and attach it to the old way of living. In other words, it's got to be new altogether. You can't mix it up. You can't be uh, uh, walking and putting your walking in the things of the world and doing the things of God at the same time. We can't be, you, you know... Uh, uh, here and there doing both you can't be walking in the things of sin and then wanting to follow jesus and following jesus and and getting involved in the things of the world and sin because that would destroy everything he's trying to bring a message that it has to be new altogether see we cannot take the new revelation that god is releasing to every one of us and try to place it in an old vessel it's got to be a new vessel. See, we will lose the new wine, he says, and destroy 
and destroy the old vessel if we did it like that. Like that. Instead, we need a new vessel for the new wine. We need the new wine skins for the new wine. And it is important for all of us to understand what the Bible and what Jesus is really talking about. So where do we go? Where do we go to get the new wine skins, right? We talked a little bit about that, so I want to come into that real quick to establish it this morning. See, the encouraging thing when we read this scripture is that the word new, when referring to wine, is neos, N-E-O-S. When you say new wine, neos is the word that is used in the original language. And this means recently revealed or what was not there before. Something brand new. Something that never existed before. New wine. Something that was never there before. New wine. Now, new wine has never been there before. Jesus has come into the picture. This is a new day. A day of grace. A dispensation of grace. Now, the word new that you're able to see there for new, new wineskins is different. The word new is talking about wineskins. It is kainos. K-A-I-N-O-S. It's different. So even though you see it and you read it new and new, in the original language, one means something different than the other. And what this second one, the word new, what it means, this means the, 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 the following. The word new, when talking about wineskins, it means fresh, in development, new in quality, or in opportunity. It means not found exactly like this before. In other words, this has been in existence, but now it's been renewed. That's what the word new means on new wineskins. And that's what God is trying to tell all of us even as I finished or as I ended the message last week, is that God is not necessarily looking for brand new wineskins. He's looking for wineskins that can be renewed and stretched one more time and that can expand one more time. The reason why I, I, I want to continue in this message today and God spoke to me is that there's many people in our congregation today that you need to be renewed one more time. That God has a brand new wine, a new anointing that he wants to pour upon his church all throughout. Especially here in Santa Rosa Victory Outreach. But I want to let you know that many times we read something like this and we say God wants to pour a new wine, a new anointing, a new power, a new moving of the Holy Spirit upon our church and upon our families. But God is looking for somebody new. Well, God is not necessarily looking for somebody completely new. God is looking for those that are willing to be emptied of the old and begin to stretch one more time and allow God to begin to do a new thing in their life. Come on, somebody need to give him a good praise. See, we have cried out to God. Use us, Lord. Use me. And he wants to use us. But many times our vessels have to be renewed before he can pour new wine into us. Hello, somebody. This is a process that we need to embrace. First, my friend, the old wine needs to be drained out of us. Hello, somebody. Need to be drained the old way of doing things. Come on now. The old way of thinking. See, we need to be empty. That's what it means. We need to be empty. We need to come to an end of the good things that we were involved in during the last season. Come on now. That was a last season. And God wants to bring us into a new season. In your life individually. But also as a, as a church corporately. God has a new season for our church. God has a new season for your life. But you must believe it. And you must understand it. That God is not going to pour the new in the old. 
The old cannot contain the new that God wants to pour into your life. So because of that, God is going to do some draining in your life. Come on now. Drain the swamp. Hello, somebody. God wants to drain something old and ugly. God wants to drain something that is no good to move your life forward. God wants to drain something that has kept you now stifled and you, you plateaued in your life. And God is saying, I'm about to do a new thing. But you must be willing to be drained, to be emptied, so that I can pour a new thing into your life. Come on, somebody need to give them a good praise. This process that we need to embrace, the old wine needs to be drained out of us. We need to be empty. We need to come to an end of the good things that we were involved in during the last season. That looks like opportunity drying up. Hello, somebody in your life. A dying or an ending of all that was before. As we are empty, we quickly become dried out and inflexible. Hello, somebody. Just like an old wineskin. We don't want to move. We're not flexible. We're not open anymore. And God is saying, I'm not destroying you. I'm trying to prepare you. I'm not destroying you. I'm trying to prepare you. I got more, but the more is new. The more is greater. The more is more powerful. The more will bring more results. The more will be more, you know, greater. But you must be willing and available so that I can drain you and take what you thought it was important, what you thought it was something. Take it away from you so that I can empty you and I can pour the new thing I want to do in your life so that your ladder can be greater than the former. Listen my friend God is about to do a new thing in your life and in my life and in our church our community needs a Holy Ghost church our community needs a Holy Ghost people that are going to be filled with a new anointing and power and God will remove the all to pour the new come on somebody need to give them a good praise I wonder how many of you have been crying out and say God use me use me Lord to the fullest of my capacity, Lord. Use me, Lord, to my full potential. How do we become new wineskins? Because God wants to pour the new wine into new wineskins. Some of you are coming in and you are new. Praise the Lord. Open your life and your heart so that God can use your life. Allow God to use you. Get involved. Begin to know God more. Read his word. Study the word of God. Get alone with God in prayer. Begin to allow God to use you in the ministry. Where you work. In the streets. Evangelize. Keep some flyers with you. Minister to somebody wherever you go. Because the new wine wants to continue to move your life. The new wine is the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to move in his people. And through his people to accomplish things that never been accomplished before. You think we've done something here in Santa Rosa? You think that God has done something here through you and through the church? That's nothing my friend. God has so much more that he wants to do. God is about to come into a new season of our lives my friend. And God wants to raise up men. And God wants to raise up people filled with the Holy Ghost and power. Individuals that the Bible talk about. That they will lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. That they will cast out devils in the name of Jesus God was to raise up a people before the end time before the last days God was to raise up an anointing an anointed church like never before but you must you and I must cry out and say God fill me up I want the new I want to do a new thing for you for your honor come on somebody need to give them a good praise we cry out and we say, God, use us. So God says, okay, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to empty you of the old. If you don't get empty of the old, God cannot do the new in your life. See, there's a physical process that takes place in the renewing of these wineskins. Once a wineskin has been emptied 
of all the old wine, it becomes dry and hard and brittle. The wineskin needs to be submerged in water. Hello? For a period of time. They empty the old wine of the old wineskin. This is an old wineskin. And so they empty it. And when it becomes dry and brittle, they submerge it in water. And they keep it in water for a period of time. Completely submerged in water. Then it has oil after they bring it out. They put oil on it. Hello, somebody. And the oil is massaged into the leather to renew it and then make it pliable again. Hello, somebody. I believe that God puts us through a similar process when renewing our wineskin. Hello. When renewing your life and my life. He pours the old and says, let go of the old. You got to let go of the old. You can't do things the way you did them before. You can't think the way you thought before. You got to let go of the kakaruracha thinking. Hello, somebody. Cucaracha, not cacaracha. Cucaracha, that was, that was bilingual. Did you see that? Come on now. Cacaracha. Oh, hallelujah. That's a new word that I invented today. But I want to let you know that it's still the same insect. Hallelujah. You got to let it out. You got to let it go. You got to get rid of the old and say, I want to let go. I'm open for the new. Come on, teach me a new day. Teach me again. I want to be pliable again. You can work in my life again. You can teach me a new. Empty me and fill me up so that I can do everything you call me to do. Come on. Somebody need to give him a good praise. Once all the wine of the last season has been poured out, we enter into a season of transition. Hello. We are entering the process of renewal. And the first thing to do in a transition is, number one, when you are in a transition where God is removing the old and wanting to do a new thing. Number one, accept that God is wanting to bring change. We must accept that God is wanting to bring change. Don't oppose the change that God wants to bring. Remember that God is the one that is in control. See, choosing to let go of the old is the first step to becoming renewed. So that God can do a new thing and a greater thing in us and through us. Then we need to be submerged in the water of the word of God. We need to read the word of God. We need to study. We need to soak ourselves afresh in the word of God. This includes studying our scriptures on a new level and also bring, bring with the word. Hello somebody. Or being with the word. Spending time with Jesus. This is a very important part of the process. And too often we miss our, or confuse this step of reading the Bible. When God is doing a new thing in our lives, when God is emptying us of the old, it's a time to get in the word of God and allow him to minister to us and spend time with God because he's preparing us. He's preparing the old wineskin ready, getting it ready to stretch one more time. See, instead of simply emerging or immersing ourselves in Jesus, the word, we want to work out what is happening and try to figure out the future and what God is doing. Many times when God begins to empty us, we begin to try to come up with our own plan, our own strategy on how, how is this going to work? How is that going to work? How is that going to work? Because God is emptying us of the old, the, the last season. And God is taking away certain things in our lives. And we don't know what the next step is going to be. And we don't know what's going to happen. So we try to figure it out ourselves. And God wants us to allow him to know that he wants the change in our lives. That he is involved in this. That he's taking care of business in preparing us for our future. So we begin to work out what is happening and try to figure it out the future and what God is going to do. This is not the aim of this part of the process. This part of the process is to get into the word of God and, and get in the presence of God and allow him to guide us. The aim is to get a fresh revelation of Jesus in our spirit. That's the aim. When God is beginning to do something and put us in a transition mode, the first thing that God wants to do is begin to give us a new revelation of who he is. 
This is a time to stay still. This is a time to look to God. This is a time to spend time with God. Because God is going to begin to reveal new things. And begin to give us a new heart. And begin to give us a new plan. And on the plan of God. In a matter of time. We begin to do. And we begin to get involved. And we begin to do what God has called us to do. God wants to show us as a church. And as a ministry. That's why even on Thursday services, we changed it a little bit. And we're going to continue to do that. We're coming together with just, just as, as a, a short message that will challenge our hearts and our lives and our faith. And spend time with Jesus for 20, 30 minutes. That's what we're doing every Thursday. We're coming, a short message that is, is really, you know, pointing us to Jesus, his power, what he wants to do in our lives. And then begin to pray for different areas of our lives. This is what happened in the upper room in the book of Acts. The whole church was together. The disciples were in the upper room just crying out to God. When he poured his anointing and his power of the Holy Spirit. We want to continue to be a church that prays. Hello somebody. We want to be a praying church because praying has power. God has power. When we connect with God, there's a new thing in this moment and in a season of transition where God is changing and removing the old and wanting to bring the new. It is a time to connect with God. It is a time to sit at the feet of Jesus. It is a time where God, I'm not done yet. I'm not finished yet. God, you're going to do an amazing thing and God will begin to pour his new anointing, his new oil for the new season of life come on somebody need to give him a good praise see the aim is to get a new revelation of Jesus in our spirit when God wants to change and, and remove the old and bring in the new then in due time God will begin to pour oil over us hello somebody God begins to pour oil over us it is a fresh anointing that will be released over you. A new awareness of his presence. Hello somebody. A fresh revelation and understanding of what he is doing in you and through you. When God is doing a new thing, sometimes we become confused. We don't know what is happening. And this is a time where we stay, you know, focused and stay still in the feet of Jesus, at the feet of Jesus. And in his presence. And then soon he pours his anointing and begins to open up our eyes and our hearts so that we can begin to see what God is doing again. And we come excited one more time. This is a wonderful and exciting place to be. You suddenly start to feel as if you can do anything for Jesus. Again, one more time, you feel like, man, come on, I was born for this. You have an excellence. You have an excitement about the future and what was and what was impossible begins to feel possible again. Grace is being released to you. But you got to first understand it is God who wants to bring change. It's God who wants to bring change. Because God has more for you. And when he finds somebody, when he finds a person that plateaus. When he finds somebody that is just there. Just through the routines of life. When he finds somebody, then Jesus, what God does, he begins to allow things to happen so that that old wine can come out and be emptied out of that person because that old wine will not produce the results that God wants to see through that life. So God allows that to happen. And the new process begins. Secondly, my friend, you must, you and I must understand the God is God who orchestrated the, pro the process up to this point. It is God who orchestrated the process up to this point. In other words, the stretching that God wants to create in your life is different from every person. The stretching is different. It's not going to be exactly the same from one person to the other when God wants to bring or create a renewed wineskin. See, but everyone needs to enlarge their faith. Even though the stretching may be different, everyone needs to enlarge their faith in order to step into it. Hello. He arranges or he sets up all of the circumstances in your life. All of the circumstances 
that bring you up to the place where God empties you, it is God who is in control of it. He may use people. He may use your leader. He may use your pastor. He may use your wife. He may use individuals. But it is God who is directing everything because he knows where he's taking you. He knows what he wants to do in your life. Don't you for a moment think that somebody else is getting in the mix. Hello. Don't you believe it for a moment. Because God is the God who orchestrates the process up to this point And he wants to set you up so that you can become a brand new. So that you can become a renewed. So that you can become a vessel that he can use one more time for his honor and glory. Come on, somebody need to give him a good praise. You see, my friend, he moves your life around. So that his purpose can be established in his position. And he positions you on the brink of the new season. Fully prepared for what is ahead. Then he gives you the choice as to whether you will choose to step into it. That single step is where we need to exercise our faith. He will not override our will. He will bring us to it. But we need to decide in faith to step into it. As the scripture says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, 6. See, faith, my friend, is the ingredient that is needed from our side. Faith to believe him. Faith to believe that he brought you to this place. And it is for your good and for his glory. Hello, somebody. How many know that God is in control of everything? How many know that God is in control of, of your life? How many know God is in control of your future? How many, know, how many really know that? How many know that there's some things that happen that God works all things together for the good, right? God works all things together for the good of them who love him and are called according to what? His purpose. See, God has a plan. The steps of a righteous man or woman are ordered by the Lord, the Bible says. Steps of a righteous man or woman are ordered by God. So God is guiding us and leading us. God is working in your life and in my life. But our thing is to trust in God and allow him to empty us of the old. Because if he empties us of the old, then there's room so that he can pour the new into our lives. God wants to pour the new into all of our lives. God wants to wake us up one more time. Come on now. God wants to wake us up one more time to the spirit of gratitude. To being grateful one more time. That we get up early in the morning excited to meet with Jesus. Because he's done a wonderful thing. And we were forgetting. We were forgetting about what God has done in our lives. And God wants to wake us up one more time and say, look, I want you to feel it one more time. And know the wonderful things that I did for you. But it's not over. I want to do more in your life. I'm going to do more in your life. You see, my friend, at this point, it is time to believe God and act on it. This is the critical step. God can do everything else, but we need to choose to move with him. Looking back, I hope you can see his hand in the trials that you have been through. Hello. I hope that you're able to see God's hand in the trials that you've been through. I have. I always look back and I remember and I said, man, I remember that time. I didn't think it was God at all. I, I, I thought everything was, was, was a mess. I thought it was the end of my, my, my Christianity. Hello, somebody. I thought I was going to backslide way back over there. Hello. Last week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you look back at some heavy trials that you've been through. You've been through some things in your life. And when you look back, you remember how you, f you felt in the midst of those trials. But now that you pass those trials, you look back and you say, man, the hand of God was all over that situation that I've been through. The hand of God was all over that. And if I didn't go through what I went through, I wouldn't be where I am today. Oh, 
Come on, come on, come on. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Some things we didn't like. Some things we disagree. Some things we rejected. But after a while, God worked it all out. And looking back, we say, man, we thank God for his wisdom. I would have never thought I would go this way. I would have never thought that God was doing that. I never thought that those things were going to work out for my good. I just never thought when I was in the midst of the trouble. But oh, hallelujah, I thank God for the good. But I thank God for those trials. I thank God for the sunshine. But I thank God for the storms. Because God used it all. Oh, I can see now as I look back and I say, God was putting the puzzle together. I didn't understand it. I didn't see the big picture. But my God was at work when I was crying. God was at work when I didn't understand it. God was at work in my life and putting everything, working it all out for me and my future and my family I didn't understand it I didn't know it but I just gave into it and when you give into it God will get the glory God will get you to the next place and the next level because that's what he has for every one of us come on somebody need to give him a good praise come on somebody need to give him a good praise oh hallelujah I feel the power of the Holy Spirit in this place this morning I believe that God is going to do a new thing in most of us. Those that are willing to surrender. Those that are willing to stay at the feet of Jesus and say, God, you're doing a new thing. And guess what? I want it. I want it. God is looking for people who wants this. See, God has limited himself to working through human beings through us. He needs us. To bring about his purposes in our communities and in our nations and in our world. He does his part, but it requires us stepping out in faith. Believing his word for it to actually manifest on earth. Hello. We are in such a day today. He has a new wine and he's looking for new wineskins. And when I say new, I mean renewed wineskins. People who have been filled with wine, now God wants to pour new wine. It is a new day. It is a new season. And we are willing, those that are willing to be empty of the old and allow God to fill them up one more time with the new, those are the ones that are going to make the adjustments. Those are the ones that are going to make the changes. Those are the ones that are going to let go of the old way of thinking and begin to embrace the new and begin to accept it and say, God, you're doing a new thing and I want to be a part of it. I want you to use my life. I want, I want you to use my, I recognize that you want me to change. You want change. You want to change me. I recognize the Lord. Not only do I recognize it, but I realize that every situation, every trial, everything that is happening in my life, you've been at the center of it you orchestrated everything so that I can come to this point in my life so that I can make a decision to be renewed as a new wineskin one more time I want to be able to get to the new level oh yes I'm not done and it's not over I'm not finished come on there is more that God wants to do you've been here for a little while or a long while I want to let you know God wants to pour new wine into your life God wants to pour a new anointing into your life God wants to do a new thing in your life can you see it? Can you see yourself doing a new thing for God? Can you see yourself growing and expanding and getting involved and pushing forward for Jesus until he comes back? Can you see yourself making a difference, making an impact for God's honor and God's glory? Come on, somebody need to give him a good praise. You can do this thing. Let me just go here real quickly and I'll stop yelling. Hello. You see, when the drying up starts to happen, and if we do not understand what God is doing, we become angry and bitter at God or at people. Our hearts, our hearts harden towards him. But may I suggest that it is the hand of God steering us into the process of renewal. He wants us to understand that the shape we are in is unsuitable for the new thing that he wants to do, for the new wine. He wants to pour out into our lives. He needs us to change. And so he will create the circumstances that cause us to change. He will bring those things so that we can change 
when we find ourselves in this place, we need to acknowledge that God wants to do a new thing. And we are unprepared for it. Our wineskin is old. That means that our thinking is old. Our mindsets have hardened and set in a certain way. And God wants to reshape our thinking. Hello. So that he can be in harmony with the new ways that he is bringing into our lives with the new wine. Just as Jesus lived out a new lifestyle, we are called to live out a new lifestyle in his kingdom. Hello. Let go of the old. Stop Stop uh, 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 getting drunk on, on the old wine. Hello, somebody. Let go of the world. Let go of the past. Let go of the wrong influences in your life. Let go of those things that influence your life that are not from God. Begin to let go. Cut loose those things. And allow God to fill you up with a new wine, with a new anointing, with a new thing. Come on now. God wants to do that in your life. God wants to raise up our church, an army here in Santa Rosa that will go to the highways and the byways. That we will continue to grow and expand and help people and help the youth. We just... We just had a meeting the other day, and what a powerful meeting that was. And we had a few uh, young adults, and then we have the gang, and then we have now uh, pre preparing, and they're already ministering to the new gen, the new generation, 12 and 13 year old kids. And there's many of them who are coming, and many of those children, their families are not part of the church. So we are coming up with strategies and ways to be able to minister to their families as well, to begin to bring them. But the little ones are coming, and they got, you know. 12, 13, 14, 18 uh, young people, 12 and 13 years old, almost 20 young people that are coming together because they want a new thing. This world has nothing to offer them. They can get excited about all this stuff, but it'll fade away. It'll fade away. The world cannot give us satisfaction, and the young people are finding that out. But in the house of God, the spirit of the living God, the new wine that I'm talking about, it will bring satisfaction. It will bring purpose to the little ones to the youth and to the young adults and also to all of us the wineskins have been around for a while God wants to bring a new purpose God wants to bring a new day God wants to bring a new anointing but you must be open to receive it and say God empty me of the old and bring in the new come on somebody need to give him a good praise hallelujah thank you Jesus we're excited about that, being able to, to minister to all of our children, all of them from the children's department, and then the new generation, and then the God's anointed now generation, the youth, and then the young adults. And we want to be able to connect them all together so that as a big family, all together with us, the oldies but goodies, we'll be able to reach our community. How many know that every one of us plays a vital part or what God wants to do in this community. How, how, many, how, how many see yourself as somebody that says, man, God brought me here for a reason. God brought me to the church for a reason. God wants to do a new thing in our lives. God wants to do an amazing thing. In Zechariah, as I get ready to close, Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1, it says, ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. The Lord will make lightning clouds he will give them showers of rain, grass in the field for everyone. This is a prophetic word that God gave the prophet Zechariah. And he says, there will be a day, there will be a day when God is going to do this. He says, ask the Lord for rain. He's looking for people. This was prophetic. Look for people. And then when he talk about the rain, if, 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 when he talk about the, the, the latter rain, it's not necessarily talking about, you know, physical water, rain. It's talking about his Holy Spirit. It's talking about the anointing. It's talking about the new wine we're talking about. He says that there is the early rains and there's also the latter rains. The early rains, it, 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 it is described as when the Holy Spirit came for the first time and he touched all the people in the upper room in the book of Acts. And the latter rain, he says, is going to come right before Jesus comes back to take his people home. That could be at any moment. We are living in a dispensation of grace. Now, now is the time. Jesus could come back at any moment. So what the Bible was saying to the prophet here, he's saying that the latter rain will come right before Jesus comes back for the greatest harvest that this world has ever seen. 
And his goal, he wants to reign on people. He wants to pour that anointing upon people, upon his people, so that his people can be those that are going to be utilized mightily in new ways to be able to harvest what God wants to do. You see, God is preparing himself, or he's been ready to do something, but he wants us to prepare ourselves, to empty ourselves of the old so that he can do the new. He says, ask the Lord for rain. Ask the Lord to fill me up. Rain on me, God. He says, ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. Hello. Right now is the time to begin to cry out and to ask the Lord, come on, God. Pour it on me, Lord God. I'm ready. I want to do it. I'm willing. He says, the Lord will make lightning clouds. Hello. There's a storm coming down. And storm of power and fire and anointing of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. And those wineskins that are willing to be renewed are going to be filled with a new anointing, with a new power. Why? Because God wants to prepare a great harvest. But he's going to raise up his people for the greatest harvest of all. Come on. Somebody need to give him a good praise. The Lord will make lightning clouds. He will give them showers of rain, grass in the field for everyone. Now the phrase former, former and latter rains refers to the early and late rains. The former rains or early rains took place in October or November in Israel. October or November, remember that. And then the latter rains that the Bible talks about, it took place in January or February of the next year. Now the crops were planted in October. When the first rain, the early rains came, they got ready and they planted right away. They sowed seed. Or, and then also, and they harvested sometimes after March and April, after the latter rain. So the early rain, the early rain, and they will go and they will plant the seed. They will sow seed. And then four or five months later, after the, on the third or fourth month, there was the latter rain that came. And there was already the plant that was already coming out. And this was used as fertilizer. The latter rain was used as a fertilizer to make sure that the harvest was going to be the greatest harvest. The most complete harvest. To make sure that the harvest was going to be great and awesome. It came to secure a great harvest. That was the latter rain. Why they would do it? When Jesus says that pray for the latter rain and pray for the rain, talking about the Holy Spirit, he's talking about we must prepare for the anointing of the Holy Spirit as a church because there is a harvest at the end time that God wants to bring about the growth to the churches and to the to the ministry not only of victory outreach but internationally to all the churches that preach Jesus crucified and resurrected God wants to create the greatest revival and a harvest around the world and God says I'm going to pour my spirit and I'm going to do a new thing and I'm going to reign upon my people See, my friend, the latter rain has more to do with spiritual of God being poured out upon people rather than just agriculture. See, the latter rain is Israel brought a much sooner. No, the latter rain in Israel, in Israel, brought a much sooner and greater harvest. Hello. The rain will be used to do this. To bring a faster and greater harvest when it rained. The latter rain. These rains also clear the air, the atmosphere. And it softened the soil. And these events are spiritual application for every one of us today. And I will close with this. Number one, hastening the harvest. In other words, the harvest when it rained, the latter rains, created or caused... He made it happen. In other words, he made it happen sooner than otherwise would. When it rained, he speed up the process so that the harvest can be full and can be plentiful. See, this is for all of us today that when the Holy Spirit comes upon our lives and fills us up, 
is urging people to a greater fullness and faithfulness to God. When the Holy Spirit comes as a lot of rain, then he's going to fill us up and he's going to bring an urgency in all of our lives so that we can do what God has called us to do, so that we can remain faithful. There's some of us that get tired of walking and doing and sometimes we don't see many changes in our lives or, or, or things changing. Sometimes we get tired and we get discouraged. But I want to let you know, my friend, that when we open up our lives to be filled with a new wine or with the pouring of the Holy Spirit and the new rain, then what happens is that God begins to do a new thing that brings excitement to our lives. And we get excited about remaining faithful to Jesus. Secondly, when the rain comes, it clears the air or the atmosphere. This speaks about the ability to see better and to see further. Clearing the air, the rain will do that. Clearing our vision. Hello, somebody. You see, my friend, when you receive this oil, when you receive this new wine, there will be a removal of confusing and discouraging thoughts and discouraging spirits. Establishing a great, greater perspective of an exciting future. When you allow this rain to come upon your life and you become a renewed wine scheme, then what happens is that your vision gets clear. Sometimes, my friend, we can't see what God wants us to see. Sometimes we are confused. Sometimes we don't know what, what's next. But this feeling of God and feeling of the Holy Spirit and the new wine will give us clarity on our vision and our future for every one of us. And thirdly, it softens the soil. The hearts of people are hard outside the church. There's many who don't want nothing to do with God or with church or with Jesus. But I pray, my friend, that if we allow God to really pour this new oil, the new oil, the new wine into our lives, that people's hearts will become soft and more receptive to the gospel, but also that we, the workers, will develop a greater passion for God and a greater compassion for the people. That God would do that, that in our hearts something would happen. So when we receive this new wine that God wants to give us, God would do an amazing thing upon the people who are unsaved and ungodly. God will begin to soften their hearts. Just like the, uh, the, the latter rain will soften the soil. The latter rain of the Holy Spirit will soften the hearts of the people outside of the church. So that when we go minister to them and evangelize, they will be open and receptive to the gospel of Jesus Christ. How many know there's families out there that need Jesus? How many know there's family members that need Jesus? How many know uh, there's, a, there's a whole world needing Jesus outside? Can you imagine a miracle of God that begins to happen? A spirit of salvation that takes place all throughout? That the hearts of people all of a sudden become soft for the things of God? That they become open and receptive to the things of God. And can you imagine the, the new oil, the new wine coming down upon every one of us. And opening our eyes so that we will become more compassionate towards the people outside of the church as well. Can you imagine what that would happen? The new love and genuine love that will come from all of us in the church for a hurting world. I believe that the church will be packed out when the church begins to have this new love for people and compassion for souls like never before. This is your opportunity and mine to be able to allow God to use our lives for his honor and for his glory. I don't know about you, but I know that God wants to do a new thing in my life. I know that God wants to do something new in all of our lives. I know that we have held some, 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 some old wine in us, that we've done some things for God, that we've done a few things in ministry and preaching the gospel. I was so blessed to see the other day in regards to Billy Graham and, 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 and the appreciation and, 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 and the day that they had there in Washington and, and North Carolina or all these places where they had them. Oh, my goodness. I was just crying and weeping to be able to see how God has used this man. God has used him in such a power. They say that he preached to over 200, 200 million people in his lifetime. Over 200 million people and millions upon millions came to the Lord because of his ministry. That's not a work of man. That's a work of God. He had to open up himself over and over again for the new wine 
what God wanted to do in his life. And I believe that everyone that opens up your heart and you say, God, I am yours. Do whatever you want with my life. I believe that God would use you to whatever level he wants, to whatever level God desires for your life. You have no control of how God is going to use you if you simply say yes to him over and over and over again. Would you do that today? Would you say, God, here I am one more time. Empty me and fill me up. Lord, send the rain, the latter rain upon my life and use me for your honor and for your glory. If it's you today, I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to give the Lord a good praise. Come on now. And I want the worship team quickly to come up. Come on, give the Lord a good, good praise as you stand right now. Come on. How many believe that God wants to do a new thing in your life, my life, in all of our lives? God wants to do a new thing. And I pray that you will be receptive. I pray that you will say, God, God, here I am. Here am I. Use me, Lord. Just lift up your hands right where you're at. Lift up your hands. Nobody moving around. Just lift up your hands in the presence of God. Just for a few minutes. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, God. We praise you, God. We exalt you in Jesus' name. We glorify you, God. We acknowledge, Lord, that we need to be changed. That you, God, you want to create a change in our lives. And that you, that you are involved and been involved in every step of bringing us to this level. I want to be a new wineskin. Hello. A renewed wineskin. Where you can move in my life through the power of your Holy Spirit. Oh God, I don't want to stifle your movement. I don't want to stop or hinder the movement that you want to create in this church, that you want to create in my life or in my family. Lord, touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Come on, we're going to open up our hearts, our lives, our minds to allow God to change us here this morning. If you are new, God has a love for you that is greater than anything else, greater than anything you ever know in regards to love. If you've been here for a little while, God wants to renew your strength. God wants to renew your commitment. And God wants to clarify your vision. God wants to give you a new exciting purpose in your life for His honor and glory. If you're a young person over here, God wants to strengthen you and let you know that He's going to be with you for the rest of your life. He will guide you and lead you and use you for His honor and glory. If it's you today and you don't know Jesus, then I want you to come to the front and I want you to say, Lord, I open my heart. The world has nothing that can offer me, that can satisfy my soul. But you do, God. And I want you in my life. If it's you from all over the place, whoever you are, if you're a leader, if you're a worker, if you're a couple that is facing situations, maybe discouragement, 